we are interested in submodalities because they represent the building blocks of how we actually perceive the reality. And let's be honest, we never perceive it as it is. Did you know that after watching the movie Jaws, many people created such a strong phobia of sharks that they could not go into a swimming pool or even their own bathtub? A few decades ago, Richard Bendler and John Grinder, the fathers of the modern NLP, created a so-called fast phobia cure process. It helps people overcome phobias of various kinds very quickly. And this process uses the NLP submodalities. So today we will be talking about submodalities and how powerful they are and how we can shift them to change our perception of the reality. It's not the object that makes you afraid, it's your brain. We are interested in submodalities because they represent the building blocks of how we actually perceive the reality. And let's be honest, we never perceive it as it is. Let's think of submodalities as building blocks that we can rearrange and while doing so, our perceptions of reality will change. We don't even need to change directly the blocks themselves, only their arrangement. So to make it super easy, modalities correspond to five senses. Our vision, our hearing, our kinesthetic, which is taste, smell and touch. Through these senses, we actually perceive all the information about our environment. And submodalities refer to different variations inside each sense. So, for example, if we think about a visual sense and we visualize, submodalities would refer to the brightness of the picture, for example, or the location of the picture. And some people say, oh, but I can't visualize. We all can visualize, otherwise we wouldn't be able to recognize our friend. So basically what visualization is in this case, it's our memory of how our friend looks like. We hold it somewhere so we can actually visualize our friend and then we apply it onto the face of this person who approaches us to see if it matches or it doesn't. So if you can do this, so you can visualize. Quite often when we visualize, we place a picture in a certain location. Let's say it's in front of us, like this. It can get closer, and usually it creates more emotion when it does. Or it can go farther away. And in this case, we might feel a bit more detached from it. Sometimes it's framed, many times it's not. But what if we take the picture we are creating in our mind and we will deliberately put a frame around it? Let's put a silly frame around this one. We cannot look at it the same way anymore, can we? How about we change the colors? Let's say we make it black and white. And when we do so, we can realize instantly that this picture doesn't have the same emotional impact on us as it had when it was colorful. How about we change the size? Let's say it's huge. Oh my God, it's so scary. But if we shrink it and shrink it and shrink it to the size of this tiny little coin, and even smaller, in this case, it doesn't have the same impact on us, on our emotional state. So who would be scared of a teeny weeny tiny shark on your palm? It's just ridiculous. And quite often what happens when people actually have phobias is that their pictures are really big and 360 degrees all around them. So what if we shrink them? What if we make them defocused, grainy, noisy? And it's even hard to tell what's on this picture at this point. So there is no emotional impact from this one. Quite often when we think about things, it's like a movie. But what if we freeze the frame? And this still frame will not have the same impact on our uh, well-being, if you will. It will be much less impactful in many cases than a moving picture. Now, I invite you to pause the video with the list of submodalities that will appear here just in a second and experiment. Think about a situation that makes you somewhat uncomfortable. It might be an important event, for example. Start to change the picture. Make it bigger, make it smaller. Make it black and white. Freeze the frame. Or make it defocused and grainy. Try to make it 3D and 360 degrees panoramic. And then make it flat, like an old TV screen. And you can even use your hands to shrink the image. It can work really well if you use your physical hands to do this. Maybe stretch and shrink, play with it. And you'll notice that one of the submodalities might have the major impact on your perception, on your emotional response to this picture. This is a key submodality 
that in many cases will actually create a ripple effect and will affect other submodalities. Experiment. Another way of how we think is through talking to ourselves. We all do it. We all have this internal monologue or internal dialogue, whether we are aware of it or not. So this is the voice that can be your cheerleader that can tell you, yes, go for it. You can make it. It can be a soothing voice that speaks to you in this calm manner. It's okay. Everything's going to be all right. It can be a nagging voice that is telling you, ah, oh, you're wasting your time again, oh my goodness, what are you doing with your life? Or it can be a bully that tells you you're ugly <laughs> and all that. So, yeah, we all have these guys in our head and we all have to deal with them. So how, do, how can we actually deal with them without even changing the content of the message? Let's say we have a nagging voice that tells us, oh, you're wasting your time. Have you noticed that it's not really very productive to argue with this voice in many cases? It's, it just starts this kind of a um, dialogue inside your head that goes nowhere. You just feel bad about this um, internal argument. So what we can do about this nagging voice is to kind of say, oh, well, thanks for the message, I'll, I'll do my best. And then we can change sub-modalities of it. For instance, if you hear it on this oh, side, you're wasting your time. You can shift it, change it to the other oh, side. You're wasting your time. And even just a simple change of a location of the voice can create a profound effect. It might not affect you the same way anymore. Or for instance, many people feel it like inside their head. And you can imagine how this voice goes out of your head and to this uh, corner of the room and speaks to you from oh, there. You're wasting your it time. will be a very different experience. You can change the loudness of the voice. So if it tells you, eh, you're wasting your time again. If you make it louder, it might create a bigger impact on you. If you make it softer, eh, you're wasting your time when you're barely again. able to hear it, it will be a completely different experience. You can change the tonality of the voice. If the tonality of the voice pisses you off, you can take the same message the voice is telling you, but play it in this funny voice, like a Mickey Mouse or something. Mm, you're wasting like, your time again. My daughter likes this trick. You're wasting your time again. I mean, who can really take this message seriously when it's said in such a voice, right? You can also accelerate the speech and slow it down. If the voice is very fast paced, it makes you anxious. Um, imagine how it slows down and it says all the same things. Oh, you're wasting your time. Oh, you're wasting your time again. You are wasting your time again. You are wasting your, wasting time, your time again. It's almost ridiculous how this can be quite efficient at neutralizing the bad sensation that this voice will have on you. So I invite you to take uh, this nagging voice or any other kind of voice that you might have that is a critical voice that is not giving you great constructive feedback but rather nags you and makes you feel bad. Take this voice and change one of the submodalities one by one. So change the volume, change the location, then try to change the tonality and see how this works and change the speed. And you might discover that uh, one of the submodalities has again a major effect which uh, for you will be a driver, a key submodality that is the most powerful and you can use this information in the future if you press the pause button and actually do this exercise. Please do. Now let's explore the kinesthetic submodalities. Kinesthetic means feelings. Different feelings that we can have is the smell, the taste and the touch, but we also have a so-called evaluative feeling that is our gut feeling that comes from within and helps us make decisions. And we also have proprioception. It's when we close our eyes, but we can still tell where our body um, in space is, where our hands are. Right now, let's work on this internal feeling, which is inside. Sometimes when we are anxious, this feeling is our, in our chest or in our throat. Most often, we can imagine how this feeling actually has some qualities to it. It can be of a certain size. It can be um, of a certain color. It can have a texture to it. And it has a certain movement even though sometimes we feel like it's stuck, it's just there. If we pay close attention to it, we can find that it, it's actually moving in a certain way inside. And if it's really stuck, then it's a great way to work with this feeling is to actually pay attention and find what movement this feeling has. So for example, if I think about um, an anxiety-provoking situation in the future, I usually have this feeling 
here in my chest and it's it's like a ball ball size and it's bluish cold fuzzy and it's kind of just moving in circles small circles like this so usually when we want to change this kind of feeling we we want to first uh, pay attention to how it is in the moment and then we can start and change different qualities again so we can play with it and change the color for example or change the temperature of this feeling maybe it gets warm and it's it gets orange let's say or yellow so how is that if it's moving fast we can slow it down if it's moving really slowly we can accelerate its movement or change the trajectory we can take it out almost and just imagine how it's in front of us so change the location or make it go into our right foot for example and see how this changes the whole sensation so when it comes to a feeling you can change its texture its um, color location its movement its temperature you can also change its size and i invite you to experiment and think about a situation that makes you feel in a certain way that you'd rather not <laughs> and try to change these different uh, qualities of the sensation